Okay, so what do you guys think of Fred's death? <laughs> Oof. Yikes. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think I laughed. I thought it was so well, funny because <laughs> goodness, because you got the prediction right. And also it because so I realized funny. this. It annoyed me that she laughed yeah, in the moment, and I felt so... like I was holding it back because I'm like, oh, we're on stream. And then afterwards, I'm like, Jen, why did you laugh? It's so annoying. <laughs> but she did that in another show this week, and I noticed it happened like two more times. When moments get intense or emotional, she laughs as a, a defense mechanism for the emotion. <laughs> so I was like, all right, I got to like understand that because I was like, Ugh. <laughs> it was so He was funny. so mad at me. Well, yeah, because I was like. It was a big moment. I'm like, like I could have cried. Moment. Yeah. And so but you was, laughed and it ruined it. It ruins the moment. But to be fair, it's a defense mechanism. So, you know. <laughs> I don't know if that's tired. Yeah, be you don't think so? What do you think one. it is? Or you think it was really more about the uh, that you got the prediction right? Or that we had just, it's like I ironic thought, that yeah. we just said We were it. just talking about it. Yeah. And then it was also like, I think they haven't been a part of the picture that like frequent. So it was just like, <gasps> Oh, we're right. And like, of course, haha, ha, some yeah. one of them would die. I know it's mm. not a ha. Whatever. It was like, well, yeah, I think it's sometimes in those moments, it becomes a little more abstract because we're talking about ideas of like, who would die in these? What would make sense? And then all of a sudden we go from like the big picture stuff down into the actual story. And uh, sometimes it can get like lost in translation where we're still thinking big picture. Um but I don't know. I had gone into the story at that point. I don't know. I feel like because we're doing – maybe it'd be different. I don't know. Because we're like dissecting the book, which is really fun and I like it. But I think that takes like the emotion yeah. away from me. Yeah. Like if we had been reading, like we get to this point and I'm just picturing the, the good old days of, of reading where you get to a point in a book and even though it's late and you're tired and whatever, you're like, I can't put this thing down yeah. and you just don't stop. I feel like if you were reading this for the first time – You'd be halfway through this book and you'd be like, I am finishing this book right now. And you would just yep. not be able to stop. Every chapter, you'd be like, I'm doing more. Um, That's why your guys' read experience is so different because of that reason. Because you're going, it's been almost two years since you've gone through this whole series. <laughs> yeah, if you're yeah. reading it faster, you're, the emotional moments would, I think, key in a little bit better. Um, but you're just sacrificing for the rest of us. And we can't like, I mean, if we're doing a podcast, we, I mean, unless we want to record every single day, which is just ridiculous, we can't do like, you know, finish these books super, super quick. Yeah. Right. But right. that's why some of these moments, some of the more emotional moments in the series where like someone has died, haven't hit you guys quite as hard because it's not like, I don't know, I guess the amount of time that you're going through this, it's like you, if you read real quick, you just want to get to the next page. That's why like. The next chapter that we're going to do, everyone is like, you have to do the next two combined because of that reason. Because mm. when when the next chapter hits, you guys are just going to like, it's one of the chapters where you have to go on to the next page. Right. It's like an impossibility to not go <laughs> on to the next page. Yeah, yeah. So your reading experience <laughs> is just different. Your The emotional cues are going to hit different, which has just been fascinating. But it gives us so much part. time to process, which is yeah. good and bad. So that's why I think rather than the emotion building so much from the previous chapter as you just have to read on, yeah. it's like we have time to process each chapter before we read the next one. Um, so then I think some of the emotion is then um, has dissipated yeah. by the time we keep reading. So it's good and bad. Yeah. Um, and that's why it was so funny to me because <laughs> you guys literally were like, it's going to be, it's such a good literary device if he, if he dies. And, and then I feel bad. Like, you guys were saying. When I was saying that, it was so <laughs> like, it was abstract. You're no, like, it real. makes so much sense. And it really does make a lot of sense in the story. Because you're like, you know, he's not really, you, there's always another spare one. <laughs> right. The, and it stinks because I just didn't think about it. And I was like, oh no, it does make a lot of sense. Um, <laughs> but it is also, well, I, then I was thinking about it this week. She chose Fred instead of George. Yeah. And I was like, that's interesting i so already forgot who what happened. george is the one with the the ear scar uh -huh. so now we only have george yeah and george was slightly more reserved than fred yeah. um it seems yeah just based on who talks more and stuff um although i'm sure somebody did a breakdown but who online killed where we could him find again? how many words things have said um we don't really know there was just a blast oh, okay and uh he the he whole died all like kind of yeah exploded but wasn't he joking right before too? Yeah, he yep. was. Oh, he the with, last thing he's he with talking Percy. to Percy. Yeah, that's like a beautiful moment because they were at odds, and then now he's like, "You're joking, Percy. You're actually joking." That's what it was. Yeah. And then the blast in the wall, and then 
It's like every, every the whole world stops and he's he's dead. You remember mm. that by Fred Rhymes with Dead. So that's how you remember it. That's all Ooh. the fans remember it. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Wow. It's a sad one, though. But uh, we'll keep talking about that. But welcome to the podcast. I'm John. Jen. Danny. And Kristen's not here. But welcome to the podcast. Uh, and this is Harry Potter and the First Time Readers. I forgot how to do that for a second. Um, okay, so we're going to speed through this one so we can actually do our live read right after this. But the Battle of Hogwarts has a few really good moments. But what did you just think of the the entirety of the battle? Um, what did you think of just like the general feel of what was going on? Do you think that they're going to succeed? I hope so. <laughs> I feel they like got they reinforcements. Up a good start, yeah. a good fight from the start. And I feel like being in the castle is always better than, you know being out like they can be on the defensive a little bit mm -hmm. but i can't tell like i don't know holes getting blasted in the, in the castle is not a good sign um i feel like we're not in tune with what's going on in the bigger battle because we've just been with the kids so i don't have a great feel for what else is going on like mm -hmm. where are these battle lines drawn um we're just seeing a lot of little moments within the battle. Yeah. Um, it's not like we're getting that big picture of like, you know, a bunch of giants lined up here and a bunch of the teachers here and they're fighting over this thing. Um, yeah. So I just, I don't even know, but it feels like the evil people have a lot of advantages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> they, uh, I feel like they outnumber. Are they outnumber? That's what I was wondering. It feels like they've been preparing for something like I, this i guess yeah. also they don't care they have no emotions they're just right. like kill mm -hmm. and well that's a huge difference right but, there yeah and you know, hogwarts is doing good they're like sending the younger students home but uh what do you think about the students that are staying back and again there's like one factor that is thrown into the mix of this is that voldemort has the elder wand so do they yeah. even stand a chance it it cannot be defeated mm -hmm. so voldemort can't be defeated so it just feels like that as he's walking around in this battle or flying around, he is just going to be getting victory, victory, victory against each of the people he faces, mm -hmm. which even without the Elder Wand would be kind of what we assume. Um, I guess I was hoping that the Hogwarts would protect its own students somehow. Like it yeah. was like it's did alive. They asked for help. They should have because then it will be given. They did. They asked Hogwarts for help and all the so Pierre Totem Locomotor and all the. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So that does help. I think they need a little more help still. Yeah, I know. The paintings um, are trying to help, but they can't really do much. But, I know. No. Or well, the I feel ghosts like ghosts yeah. or the. I don't know. I'm the ghosts would affect more. me and you, Jen. We're, we'll walk into that and then all of a sudden we get <laughs> like, cold and we're like, I'm, I'm too out cold here. for I'm a battle. Out. I'm not doing this. I'm not fighting today. Uh, true. <laughs> but the problem is the Dementor is already like the cold and, yeah. uh, you know. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, it is not looking good for for the side of good. Mm -hmm. I just can't figure out how it's going to go from here. Um, I was very surprised and disappointed how many people left. Not a single Slytherin stayed. Yeah, I know. I was like, oh, man. Like, that kind of seals the deal. Slytherin stayed. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? All this time, I'm yeah. like, yeah, like, it's all right. They're they're one of the houses. They're, you know, they got a bad batch right now, but, you know. And I'm like, no, they just stink. They all stink. <laughs> um, I've been saying that from the beginning. Yeah. I know. I've just been holding out hope that in the end there would be like a little bit more like e even, well, I guess we're seeing a little bit of potential with Malfoy now, I guess. But even really? after Harry saves his life, then we're I like, know. can we really trust him? Of course yeah. we can't. Um, but I don't know. Um, with Horace leaving too, I'm like... It just feels weird. But then, all right, that's fine. Move on. But then even the other houses, it felt like not many of the others stayed. I'm like, even them? But I guess I get but it. The other, what are they going to I feel like, like it's yeah, like Yeah, like a, what are you going to do? It's a, what's it called? Like a sacrifice. What is it called when you're like going into something knowing most of them are dying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she's talked about this after the fact. Um, she said um, the fans really wish that she had... Uh, kept a few Slytherins, but no Slytherins stayed. Um, 
she said half of the Ravenclaws stayed. So like all the students fifth year and below got sent home no matter what. Mm-hmm. Half, she said like half the Ravenclaws stayed and she said the majority of the Hufflepuff stayed and the majority of the Gryffindor stayed. And they stayed for two different reasons, which we'll talk about at a whole different time. But uh, um, she's she's mentioned that. So there's there's probably not a ton of students staying, but there's like a, yeah. a decent amount of Hufflepuffs and Ravenclaws. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, um, and they're all kind of fighting this battle for the specific reason that Harry can look after something, which he keeps forgetting to look after. Which is so silly. He I know. He keeps losing sight of that. I know. Which, I mean, it's like easy. It's understandable that he's losing sight of it. But yeah. these are, there's some interesting lines. I'm, I'm curious what you think of the gray lady and her whole story. Uh, because these are some of the lines that we get of hers. Where he goes, well, help me then. Her composure was slipping. It's, it's not a question of, she stammered, my mother's diadem. Your mother's? She looked angry with herself. When I lived, she said stiffly, I was Helena Ravenclaw. You're her daughter. But then you must know what happened to it. And later, she says, he tracked me to the forest where I was hiding. When I refused to return with him, he became violent. The Baron was always a hot-tempered man. Furious at my refusal, jealous of my freedom, he stabbed me. The Baron? You mean the bloody Baron? Yes, said the great lady. And she lifted aside the cloak she wore to reveal a single dark wound in her chest. When he saw what he had done, he was overcome with remorse. He took the weapon that had claimed my life and used it to kill himself. All these centuries later, he wears his chains as an act of penance. As he should, she added bitterly. Then after that, uh, he goes, or she goes, he hid the diadem in the castle. The night he asked Dumbledore to let him teach, said Harry, saying it loud, saying it out loud made uh, enabled him to make sense of it all. He must have hidden the diadem on his way up to or down from Dumbledore's office, but it was still worth trying to get the job. That might have gotten the chance to nick Gryffindor's sword as well. Thank you. Thanks. So what do you think of her story? Um, and what do you think of the great lady? It's sad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. And weird that she has to be in this castle with the Bloody Baron now, like just the... But they never seem to interact, at least it was never said. Yeah, yeah, not that mm. we've seen. Because we've never true. seen her before. It is it is kind of fun to like put the pieces together. Like you have heard of the great... Uh, you haven't really heard of the great lady, but you've heard of the Bloody Baron all the time before. And you've never yeah. really wondered about a story until like this is put together and you're like, oh, wow. He actually has like a dark, you know, backstory. Yeah, yeah, which kind of makes sense. Yeah. We, like if we were to guess on his backstory and his mm-hmm. name and all, it's like, yeah, doesn't sound the best. Mm. Um, but Nearly Headless Nick always feels a little lighter. You know, he's... Yeah, uh, I know. He's kind of nice. Yeah. So, <laughs> I don't know. It's weird. You want some attention, Wes? <laughs> I started to. <laughs> um, um, I think I'm... It's interesting that this, like Harry was able to get her to give some details. Yeah. um, But no other student was able to. So I don't know if she understood the gravity of the situation or if Mm. there was something more. This um, is another very rare moment that I actually think the movie does slightly better in the books mm. for like how Harry is actually able to obtain the information from her. Um, And the acting that the gray lady has um have you ever seen uh no country for old men no uh she's an actress in that and she's spectacular in this she has a very small part in this movie but uh she's so good in this in this role i think and yeah how harry's able to get the information is actually i think done a little bit better Hmm. rather than like it almost seems like at this point jay like joe is like okay i have to like he has to get the information somehow well yeah yeah not necessarily rushing but she's like okay we gotta like i gotta kind of wrap this up yep Um, yep I think the movie does it really well, to be honest. Yeah, because it, it it is a very key moment. I mean, it feels like without that, I mean, she could find another way to do it, I guess. But yeah. um, it was important. And maybe maybe the ghost understood the important, the gray lady. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of wish she was mentioned at some other point in the books yeah. so that it could be like a callback to something. I think that um, she was once. Okay, that's I good. I want to say she was mentioned once. Or it was like Harry knew her because she was like in a classroom that that uh, he was in, but it was like barely, barely mentioned, yeah, just yeah. like a single time. Yeah, and it is she just in Ravenclaw Tower, or is it like 
mostly there. Or yeah. each house gets a ghost, right? So yeah. she's the house ghost of Ravenclaw. Yeah. Um. So it, she's able to roam the castle, but she probably just stays in you hmm. know Ravenclaw Tower a lot. Probably like a lot of the other the other uh, house ghosts do the same. Yeah, and so then I guess ghosts maybe can't go into the room of requirement. Um, because that'd be interesting if she found mm. her uh yeah her diadem her lost diadem. Um, I it's almost like she doesn't want it, which is another interesting mm. point. Like it, it, that point was always when when Dumbledore was talking to Harry about why about the memory for why Voldemort was coming back into the castle. We had a long discussion on what he really wanted to do. And you were like, I think some of your suggestions were like, maybe he wants to get back to the Chamber of Secrets or something like that. But do you understand now what he was actually trying to accomplish? Like when yeah, he was applying for his job. Yeah. Wait, didn't we mention that though? That we were trying, he was trying to get things. Yeah. Like possessions from each house. Mm-hmm. For Horcruxes. I feel like we did discuss that. Yeah. I just didn't know he had one already. Yeah. You, right, right. And then it feels like... How did like, he even get it, though? Like, how did he find it? Well, he got her to say where it was. Mm -hmm. Oh, because he's charming. Yeah, yeah. Stuff. That's yeah. right. Um, and I think we've, didn't we've look like kind of wondered man. that this whole time, Snake why man. the kids seem to just ignore ghosts. <laughs> and even, like, Moaning Myrtle, who, like, wants to be their friend they don't seem to care that much yeah. about where we're thinking once they go to a death day party, we're like, like talk to these ghosts. And I know they for probably sure. have the, all these like awesome stories yeah. of like the past and this. That was the one thing that we did say about that chapter. We're like, go talk to the ghosts. They're so in, they have such interesting yeah. stories. And so if they had talked a little more, I feel like they would have had more information about the castle magic history. Like, but like they don't really care about magical yeah, history, but we're like, yeah. that's awesome. Um, it would have been fun in the death know. day chapter if you got like a line where the bloody <laughs> yeah. baron came in and there was like a, there was another ghost giving him a, you know, a dark look in the corner. And yeah, you're like, yeah, what yeah, the heck yeah, is like, going on there? And then all of a sudden that's a callback to this. That would be awesome. That would have been fun. Um, so I think some of that stuff is a little weird. I'm wondering with, was Voldemort's goal just to apply for the job and not even to get it? Because he already got what he wanted? Yeah. Or did he have plans to put this diadem somewhere else? No, I think he had plans to put the diadem in the room of requirement. I think that was his ultimate plan. I think he actually did genuinely want the job, too. Um, yeah. There's a little bit of debate about like this. But. Oh, okay. But that would have maybe just been not a bonus. bonus. He really wanted the yeah. job. He really wanted to hide the diadem, but he could have done more if he yeah. had the job. Because he he is all about magical education. Yeah, which is <laughs> he so just weird. He wants to do it his way. Um... <laughs> He waits till the end of the school year every single time to attack. But after they're done with their finals, he's like, all right, now I can go. It's time. <laughs> but I think Yikes. he actually genuinely wanted the job. That's why he cursed it when he, um, didn't, get he it. didn't get it. So, And maybe he maybe he really just wanted the job again for what it says here so he can look for the, the sword or look for the Gryffindor object. Maybe he really just wanted to be in the castle for that reason. But Wonder, I think he kind of wanted it. Does Dumbledore blame... Did he blame himself for creating Voldemort? Mm. I think a little bit. Because doesn't he say that to Harry? Yeah. At some point, he kind of says, like, you know, I wondered if I should have just never gotten him from the orphanage. Yeah, because um, I wonder what would have... Yeah, like, what would have happened um, if he didn't? And maybe that's a big question in general. Same thing with Harry. If he mm. never got a letter to Hogwarts... Would he know that he was magical at some point? Would he come to terms with it after he appears on rooftops or talks to snakes a few times? <laughs> then it's like, something's weird with me. And maybe he would never mention it, but just would go about a normal life and like kind of slowly. Or maybe he would develop his own kind of wagadoo thing and wandless <laughs> and whatever. Um, but I don't know. Or, well, it's hard to say. And Dumbledore, what he thinks about Voldemort, what would have happened? Would he have become a serial killer of muggles mm. um maybe he wouldn't have the power because he wouldn't know how to use it yeah he, but maybe that could be even more dangerous i don't know um or the same thing like we are kind of saying with ariana if you don't use your magic it, it, like does it fade or turn in on itself or whatever could some of that have happened with voldemort after a certain yeah. amount of time like if you don't use it and then you're of age it fades away or whatever we just don't know so um it is strange. I'm also confused why Dumbledore couldn't reverse the curse 
on the dark arts defense against the dark arts um professor it almost feels like they didn't know it was there but after a certain number of years they should have picked up <laughs> yeah. on it you know it's like oh wow we lose a professor every single year um <laughs> It's more than just chance at a certain point. Mm. Um, How do you uncurse something? That's an interesting question. And I mean, I know Voldemort's really good, so his curse must have been pretty intense. But can't you undo a curse? <laughs> and what what is the curse on? Just the idea of the teacher? Mm. Or is it on the room? Is it something in that room, in that space, in the, in the castle? Um, so, yeah, I'm just uh, left with some, some questions. <laughs> but... For even if Dumbledore could or couldn't do it, there might have been consequences. But he said, "We'll just keep going with this. It's fine." But then he even puts people that he likes, like Lupin, in that position. Mm. So putting someone you like in the position of potentially like of under a curse, um, yeah, it's kind of scary. Yeah, it's a bit intense. Um, would you have kept a few Slytherins captive? Because <laughs> Aberforth comes <laughs> in and he's like, "How did you keep some of them? Like you know, captive." Um, that's smart. <laughs> probably I think you yeah. guys mentioned that in the chat you're like yeah he's got a good point there. i just feel like letting them their just parents go, are death eaters yeah though. like where are they gonna go and and how do you know they're gonna go and then we saw right here with you know malfoy mm -hmm. and crab and goyle they didn't go so now you got all these slytherins just wandering around the castle mm -hmm. they're behind enemy lines and they're free to do what they want. Mm. That seems like a mistake. Now, if you can banish them somehow, like uh, you into can send them away and then. Or you send them to a room and someone watches them. Well, yeah, them. you could lock them in yeah. a room too. But I'm just saying, even if you weren't going to keep them captive, if you could shove them in the flu network and let them get whisked yeah, away somewhere, yeah. maybe. Um, but it felt weird to just, it seemed like they were just wandering out of their own volition. Yeah. Um, and that felt strange. And I hope that doesn't come back to bite us again. I know. They, um, they definitely, mm -hmm. yeah, there, there was a, there's even the point where if they did the use a flu network to get them out, um, I was, I was happy when Neville's grandma came through and she's like, oh, I sealed it. Even though yes. I'm like, oh, they have no more reinforcements. And then you're like, okay, they can't get attacked from behind, you know, mm -hmm. it's great. And that's also a really cute moment. <laughs> it was I love that. so funny. I know. <laughs> yeah. There, that's one of my favorite lines in this whole chapter where uh, she's she like, goes, so proud. I was the last to come through, said Mrs. Longbottom. I sealed it. I think it unwise to leave it open now uh, Now Aberforth has left his pub. Have you seen my grandson? He's fighting, said Harry. Naturally, said the, said the <laughs> old lady proudly. Excuse me. I must go and assist him. With surprising speed, she trotted off I know the stone steps. <laughs> I love but that. So, I mean, in a way, it's kind of bad because it yeah. was like she kept. Didn't she like make him feel bad for like yeah. not being strong or like sticking up for himself and yeah. taking like his parents' way, like the genes, I guess. Like he was the know, opposite of the parents. Yep. Well, I feel like that stuff is is weird. Uh, like every human needs to go through hard times in order to be tough and whatever. And that's like fine but i think grand just took it too far yeah and and he was too young so it's funny to see that harry's approach was the gentle approach the encouraging approach and that seems to be what yeah. neville actually needed um but maybe some of grand's technique did work a little bit too um so i don't know but i'm glad she's come around um yeah that that's yeah i think you kind of said it well i i it must have been hard for her because I like Frank and Alice, her her uh, her kids, or like uh, she's she's long bottom. So Frank's her son, I'm guessing, and then um, Alice, her daughter in law. <clears throat> That's got to be hard to see them go through that. And then I'm sure when Neville's coming, he's this shy kid, and like she has to take care of him. It's probably got to be tough for her, but at the same point, she's got to be loving and like you know accept him for who he is. But there is a part to it where I love this too. Like it's simultaneously like she's, you know, not a great uh, uh, guardian. But at the same <laughs> point, I'm like, it is so cute that she's so proud of Neville now. For Neville growing up to be just like his parents. I, I, I like to get choked up at this line every single time mm. I read it. It's like Neville. <laughs> you, you guys finally understand why I like <laughs> Neville. He's like this <laughs> yeah. kid that has such a good arc. He, he goes from being shy and nervous to being such a good, uh, courageous person. Yeah, yeah, seriously. Huge growth. Yeah. Um, like the most that we see, I think. Yeah, honestly. Um, which is so great. Yeah. And then even Grand coming around, you know. I know. 
And um, there, there, this is like a chapter you get a lot of bit, a lot of arcs of the characters too, like Crab and Goyle, like Crab being able to like do this stuff with the fiend fire, and like he's truly turned out like dark and nasty when he was just quiet before. He, the way, even the way he's talking to Malfoy, he's like, oh, he's like, you, you, got, your family's done. He's like, we're the ones that are in charge now. We don't have to listen mm. to you. Like, wait, dang, Crab, like getting to this point is pretty yep. intense. And that's like a classic evil thing of like yeah. betraying his friend that he was supporting this whole yeah. time, and it was just of you know a desire for power because the malfoys had power then yep. and then all of a sudden when something changes there's no loyalty um so yeah it kind of stinks and it's like again why you always say why would anyone want to be evil yeah, or like know, yeah. aligned to these people so but it true. is like they're all just jockeying for power so even though voldemort is the one with the ultimate power it's like they all just want a piece of that power even yeah they, you're right it's weird they're they almost know they're not going to get it but they're still so deluded that they think they're going to get some of it mm-hmm it is the ongoing question that <laughs> this podcast is, why do people follow him? There's not a great answer for that one. <laughs> yeah. Mm. He never rewards anything. Though. I know. That's what's so bad. He right. tortures them if they do anything wrong. It's like you're on eggshells around this guy. Um, I thought it was weird that Harry was giving his conclusions of everything out loud to the gray lady but didn't wait long enough for her to confirm anything. Yeah. He was just like, I think it was this, and it was this, and it was this, and, and then he's gone. Goes. I was like, oh, I really hope he's right, because it, it all <laughs> happened so fast. I'm like, just wait for like something, yeah. but I feel like she didn't even nod her head or anything. Um, I was hoping she would confirm it, and I, I was worried it would lead to something bad, but then, all right, it all worked out. So. That, yeah. Well, kind of. I mean, <laughs> they were being watched. <laughs> that is Harry, too. He is like reckless. When he, when he has his mindset on thing, something, he's convinced that he has that. That this plays, I think it's a good contrast in this chapter between that moment where you're like, Harry, just wait and confirm these things because he's yep. rash and he just does something to the other good moment in this chapter where he literally saves Malfoy, Crab and Goyle's life or tries yep. to save Crab's life. Because he's like rash. He's like, we have to do this. And you love him for that. And you love him for the other reason, too. But it's like this is who Harry truly is. He has a saving people complex. And he really when he's convinced about something, he goes for it. Yep. Yep. And even later, um, like the next page uh Hagrid comes in which is of course yeah. great um and he's like where are we going and Harry says I don't know exactly and he, he makes making another random turn yeah so it just Harry feels like he's just running around the yeah, castle yeah, yeah. um but Ron and Hermione must be around here somewhere and again it's like I just wrote following instincts because that's what wait who said that Lupin said to him I mm -hmm. think so his instincts are good and I'm like we'll take the map out but he doesn't but um it was, uh, again, just trusting his instincts, and it tends to work out pretty well for him. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, Harry's character is pretty remarkable for this. Oh, Sir Cadogan, or Cadogan, <laughs> Cadogan, um, running alongside yeah. him. I, I thought that was so great. Yeah. Um, again, not this, much he can do. Uh, when Harry was soldier. running in a, in a hallway. Yeah, yeah, he's the, the knight. That yeah, I, that's He it. was... Yeah. When know. the fat lady got torn by Sirius Black, he, she, he was a replacement for her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so he's <laughs> okay. come up a couple, couple times randomly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I just, there's not much they can do except communicate. They can yeah. spread word. <laughs> so the painting should be running around. They're over here. Yeah, this is best communication system in like, school right there. Yeah, right? That, and I feel like that like should happen. Spying but, on them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but other than that, there's not much they can do. But there's that's moral support. So <laughs> It's good Kedogan. encouragement. <laughs> Um, yeah, there's, uh, I don't, I'm not a ton left to talk about in this chapter. I, I want to know what you think about, um, is the Horcrux actually destroyed? And if it's destroyed, is Nagini the, la the last one? They just have to destroy Nagini and they're it? Let me look at my list. Yes, I think so. I think it's destroyed because it made that sound and then mm -hmm. it was a cursed fire and Hermione yeah. was like, oh yeah, it's like cursed magic or evil magic so that would make sense mm -hmm. that it's destroyed and nagini is the last one because they did everything else um, wait oh the goblet though was that destroyed oh yeah hermione did it mm -hmm. yep yeah with the basilisk ve venom which i called yeah props to me <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, the next, I, I'm going to say this too, just to help you guys. The next two chapters, um, in the smattering of your guys' uh, <laughs> predictions, 
You guys Something have with. nailed a few things that we will Ooh, get to in the nice. next cha- next two chapters. Godgal really is Harry's grandma. Some of you guys, <laughs> some of, I'm not going to say who, but one of you is really right in one chapter and one of you is really right in the next chapter. Ooh, nice. So. All right, good. What the? I'm so curious what it is. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I have Nagini as being um, the last one. Okay. But I'm still thinking there could be more to this. Um only because we keep saying that Voldemort is the last one. And we've speculated what if Harry is like an accidental one. And I thought that made sense for a little bit. And now I'm like leaning away from that because it feels like silly. Like that would only happen if he knew and he brought another object that could have been a Horcrux. But then it didn't happen unless Wormtail picked it up. I don't know. Mm. So then I thought, but what if he actually did make a seventh one? Um and just we just never heard about it. Um, I guess what I'm trying to say is <laughs> okay, so. he doesn't have a Gryffindor object. Yeah. yeah so yeah. that he kind of needs one. And so I'm like, what would his who would what would his Gryffindor object be? It like, was well, probably gonna be Harry. <laughs> like it was going to be Harry. And like his whole family were Gryffindors. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it would be interesting if he was like, oh, I'm gonna kill Harry, and then create a okay, Horcrux now, that's, that's a Gryffindor. It's like, a little gross, but what if he was going to use Harry's skull ew. as the Horcrux? What about his binky? <laughs> <laughs> Did Harry have a binky at that point? Maybe. He had a blankie, a really special oh blankie. Whoa, he does have a special blankie. <laughs> um, but so maybe that. Uh, only because th- there needs to be a Gryffindor object. So it makes me think that Voldemort was planning on doing that and it could still be the sort of Gryffindor or it could be something else that is like a curveball. Um, whether it's, uh, the invisibility cloak doesn't make sense because Harry would have been like, mm. we, we just saw like evil coming out of the Horcruxes. And so whatever it is, even the sort of Gryffindor doesn't seem to make sense, but what else could it be? Mm. So anyways, I'm like, uh, I'm curious and skeptical and it would not surprise me if Voldemort did not think, I'm at number seven. I want seven. Seven's the round number that I'm looking hmm. for. I want seven objects, which would be each of the four houses plus the journal and Nagini and the locket of House Gaunt. Interesting. So, yeah, I'm just curious. And that's what I'm kind of waiting for. Um But they, they still, regardless, they still have to destroy Nagini, which I don't know how they're going to get to. And they're nervous about this fire stuff. So that's why it's weird, too, where I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. They really come to Baltimore, so it won't be that hard for Harry. Yeah. They come together. Yeah. and it, But if this fire is so crazy and deadly and, like, weird, can you just do it on a whole army? Or is that just you don't want to let it out? There's there's actually debate. Some people say the room requirement is so strong it heals itself. But I would say it's maybe a more, I don't know, majority opinion, but... That the room of requirement room of requirement is actually destroyed after this, and that they cannot use it from this point on, which is kind of sad. Like, w- yeah, wouldn't that be crazy? Yeah. Like, it is just a room of of fire, lava, yeah. whatever. Like, you can't open it. Yeah, yeah. Um, it wouldn't surprise me, like, especially if there were it was magical charms that allowed it to open, and yeah. this fire destroys magic stuff, mostly, mm. except for a few objects on the floor. Um, so then whatever charms allowed it to exist to begin with might have been destroyed so yeah it could be destroyed disappeared whatever it could be gone um but they have some basilisk fangs and they can they can get stabbing <laughs> yeah so, just start stabbing random yeah things. <laughs> you know like let's just Shooting them uh, out and get like a cannon in like the astronomy tower you're pumping them out <laughs> yep. <at> nagini <laughs> um all right let me just scan through Oh, Ron mimicking parcel tongue. I know. I know. It's that great. Was big. Right? That was a pro move right there. I'm <laughs> proud of him. That was a great move. Set them free. Um, uh, Dobby and the house elves. We haven't seen them come out yet. And I don't know what's going on. They could yeah. have all left already, but do something to make sure that they can either help or yeah. leave. It's lovely. Give them all, pass out some clothing, you know, I, I hope they're already free, but anyways, <laughs> um, Um, yeah, even, even the next chapter is called the elder wand and the artwork in that is very ominous. So what are your predictions for what's going to happen in the next chapter? We're going to learn about it. 
<laughs> All our theories are going to be answered. I hope. Don't kill him. Um, Not for all the crap. All right, sorry. Um, yeah, what do you think? <laughs> That's what I think. <laughs> no, you got to have more than that. <laughs> oh, well, there were so many theories. I don't remember. Is, um, is this going to be like, you know, the... Danny's one of those. In Lord of the Rings, Surprise. when you know they're fighting at the beginning of the movie where it's like, oh, victory was near at hand, but the power of the ring will not be undone. And like Sauron <laughs> comes out and just destroys half the Whoa. army. Is it going to be like that where, where like everyone else is doing Voldemort's work now and then all of a sudden Voldemort comes out with the Elder Wand and it doesn't look pretty. Great comparison. Yep. Maybe. But then a part of me thinks that Harry is the better wizard and doesn't it want to be with the better wizard? Hmm. So would it work? Like, I just picture it being like a magnet, like Voldemort goes to use it against him and then it like turns on him and goes to Harry. Well, that's actually a really interesting idea. Like it, it chooses a more powerful wizard, but it chooses a more powerful wizard based on if they've disarmed the person or won them, beat them in combat, which, which Harry, Harry hasn't done. always uses Expelliarmus. Yeah. Though, so. Yep. That's like his. Yeah. Has he beaten Voldemort, but see, but yes, that was before but not he had the he had Elder Wand. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So that kind of trumps it. I don't know. I just feel like Harry is different. So like, he's got all these like ancient magic protections. Mm. So. <laughs> yeah, all the protections. And he has the cloak. So I'm like, I think the cloak can protect him from the Elder Wand mm. because it seems as though it's part of that um, Deathly Hollows yeah. thing. And can they use those things against each other? Because we've mm. never seen that in the stories. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Can they use, yeah, Harry just needs to run around with the visibility cloak and he's going to be safe from the Elder Wand. Mm. Everyone else is going to get destroyed. But Harry's, too bad he Harry can't make the invisibility cloak huge. Like, isn't there a thing to blow it up? Like, make it <laughs> yeah, bigger? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cover the whole castle. You cover <laughs> the whole, like, yeah. room. It does seem resistant to certain kinds of magic. Like they, they oh, remember they true. say Akio cloak yep. and it doesn't come. So I'm yeah. sure it'd be resistant to that. <laughs> Why not try it though? Yeah. Let's just get the creative. castle real quick. Everyone yeah. under the invisibility cloak will yeah. like, you know, sneak around. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like we haven't seen Voldemort in action yet. Or maybe um, Dumbledore come back to life. <laughs> yeah. Could there be anything that like, cause <laughs> that's what we keep saying too. What has Dumbledore done to prepare the castle Harry, the teachers, other students, Maybe you know, Hogwarts will help will you if open. you ask. Like, oh, yeah, what, what's the close? Like, all of these things that we, that's a good point. That is something we can sink our teeth into. Dumbledore sets something up. And when it closes, the snitch opens and something is revealed. And mm. so Maybe we, the we just wands want in that there. to be big. <laughs> Maybe the real wands yeah. in the snitch. It's like the a magic one. trick. He pulls it out. The elder one, the real elder one. Yeah, but the only way a fake Elder Wand could be out there is if um, Ollivander was doing it. And I just, Ollivander left me a little bit like, oh. <laughs> We also couldn't like keep track of who actually had the Elder Wand. It's still part of me, Grindelwald thing or whatever. Grindelwald. Yeah, I mean, you guys have theorized about that before, of who is the actual owner of the Elder Wand. You, some, you said Grindelwald, I think. Um, I forgot who else you said. Um, <laughs> this what's going on. The Switzerland town. Yep. <laughs> um, I think it's weird because in my mind, no matter who owns it, it's owned by the person who is holding it. Because in a weird way, like no matter what, if you're holding it, you you want it. You got mm -hmm. it. You defeated or whatever somebody to get it. But well, taking it off Dumbledore's body feels weird. So that would be the only part where it's confusing. Um, so is it, is, is it even something like the ring? I mean, we keep going back to Lord of the Rings analogies <laughs> where it, said, it talks about how it abandoned Gollum to his death because it's like seeking the next person that it can go to almost or it's like seeking hmm. its one true master. Right. Um, which to Jen's theory, it could be Harry. Harry could be the one true master, the other one. But in another sense, it is like, is Voldemort taking it from a dead body? Does that does that make him the actual master of it? I mean, there's there's mm. something about even the series about like the idea of death and maybe it's such a desecration that the Elder Wand chooses him because it is like a victory over him. But I don't know. What if it just works against him? Like he messed up something. Mm. 
Yeah, I, I'm. Hmm. I don't know who it could. Or it's not to. real, and he thinks he has the power. So then, if you are prideful that you think you're going to win, you're mm. not as like strong or aware of things. <laughs> you know, like you're not on like the defense. You're like, I'm just going to beat you. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because that what is. If it's not real. That is his biggest issue is pride. Fall. Even like him thinking the room of requirement was only like his something that he found out. It's just ridiculous. Like yeah, Ron, right. Ron, after he makes out with Hermione is like, oh, this is ridiculous that he thought he was the only one that had access to it. So like he's not even thinking straight because he's so in love with Hermione. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then even Ron knows that it's ridiculous that he he thought yeah. he was the only one with access to the room of requirement, which yeah, is just is so ludicrous. Prideful. And it is it is funny that maybe the room of requirement went unused for a long time and there might have been things yeah. like that. And like maybe whole batches of students never opened it and then it became normal for anyone in Dumbledore's army. So they're like, oh, come on, this is mm. obvious. We go here all the time. Um, so I, I, it's possible it was more unique in Voldemort's day, but it is still so prideful. Um, and we love that because yep. it, it, it's blinding him. And I'm just thinking of the order of who had the wand. Dumbledore must have been the rightful holder of it. But I'm just curious how how the wand's loyalty would go from there and if it would go to snape mm. or to malfoy malfoy disarmed him snape killed him so both of those are like potentially could be rightful owners of the wand oh, yeah i think snape gets it and then turns on voldemort but would snape even know that he's the rightful owner or is he even the right i thought that owner? was his plan this whole time and and then the other thing is <laughs> Harry, Malfoy, and Boyle <laughs> now have like a life debt to Harry, right? And we don't know if life debt is really like a magic thing mm. um, or but if Dumbledore it's a it. muggle magic. Yeah, he did. But then when we saw, the only time we've seen it, Wormtail. But with Wormtail, Wormtail all little... it did is make him hesitate for a split yeah. second. And then his own arm turned against him yeah. because Voldemort gave it to him. So is the life <laughs> debt a real like... thing that requires like resolution? Or mm. is it just like an idea of like there's a certain guilt when someone saved your life? Um no one knows about the ancient magic, so. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's ancient <laughs> yeah. magic. So is that enough? Like, if Malfoy is the rightful owner, does he have to now, like, or by saving Malfoy's life, does Harry become the owner? Hmm. We'll figure out. We're into the next chapter. Yeah. We're going to do a live read, but Maybe real McGonagall quick. Maybe gets it. <laughs> yeah, real quick. Tell me who your favorite character is, who wins the hot tamale in this chapter, and what is your favorite moment? I feel like it's been a while since we we listened to this chapter, but hmm. I mean, learning more about the diadem and who killed yeah. the bloody baron and all that stuff. That was good moment. A yeah, a not a not so good moment, but I liked learning more. Um. Yeah, I loved uh, I love that moment. I also loved uh, Fred joking with percy, percy at the end and that yeah. was like when percy comes back you're like Ugh. but it's so great that they're joking and fred's last yep. thing is having fun with his brother mm -hmm. that's great yeah at least before he died i know <laughs> um i Rest feel like peace, the Fred. my favorite moment was probably right after the room of requirement with the fire and all that and harry had saved people so seeing harry kind of in his in his mm. sweet spot of like action saving people making moves um but i don't know ron and hermione running off and thinking of the basilisk fangs all that stuff i think was great too so it's hard to choose mm. but that destroying the horcrux chapter? and the fire and leaving and mm. yeah i think that was all this chapter was a, well we, was we hear chapter, about yeah. it in this chapter yeah um <clears throat> so yeah but i'm trying to think of who's the who gets the house cup it's tough yeah, I want to just give it to Fred. Fred. Yeah, I know, <laughs> Fred I know. for for fighting till the death. I think Fred deserves yeah. it for me. Mm, that's fair. And, and then, there are a lot of people doing doing great things. Yeah, I know. This is a great. It's just, yeah. Um, you could just give it to everyone fighting for Hogwarts. Yeah, right now. yeah, um, yeah. Because I I think Fred paid the the ultimate price. So yeah, we can definitely give it to Fred. I'm yeah. happy with that. Um, I'm giving I'm giving a hot tamale to Neville because yeah, nice. he's the best. His grandma, yeah, Neville's yeah. grandma. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> Ron and Hermione making out. That's hot tamale yeah, stuff. Yeah, that too. is hot smelly energy right there. Of, uh... <laughs> mm. Yep. Yeah. Can't get hotter than that. I know. Well, we are going to listen. So if you're listening to this podcast late, just go check out our YouTube channel because we are doing a live read of the next two chapters, which are two great chapters. Every who, Everyone who's, who's a Harry Potter fanatic knows the next two chapters are fantastic. So uh, thanks for joining us, uh, joining us on this journey of Harry Potter and the first time readers. This is <laughs> the moment that I've been saying every single t- every single podcast that this is where the books get really good. <laughs> These bad. chapters until so the rest of it is is it. This is the culmination of everything. These chapters are are the ones. Excellent.